This program contains flashing images. So we should have did. Should have spawned. Spawned. Ah. Let's no. go. Woo. I think I'm late, yeah. No, I'm not oh, yeah. either. Didn't think I'd be sparring Andre Ward this week. Yeah, we're mess up. Uh, I ain't got no gloves. You got gloves? Here, got gloves. right here. I think we should do it. They're baby gloves. Go for it. Let me see. Yeah. You down? Mm -hmm. Michaela Mayer is a motive force in the rise of women's boxing, competing in a predominantly male driven sport. Michaela isn't just fighting for self, but she's building a legacy. I've seen joy and I've seen pain. While being a voice for women all across the globe. Mayer has risen from the backwaters of boxing to champions and being one of the best lightweight women's boxers in the world. Now she's riding a wave, a wave in large part that Michaela and other strong voices in women's boxing are responsible for. Causing some skeptics to become believers. And it's over. Another stop Which has fueled a growing recognition that women's boxing isn't a lesser sport than the men's equivalent. Mission accomplished for Michaela Mayer tonight. The main impression she leaves isn't about ambition, though. It's more like gratitude. The satisfaction of a woman who has found her calling and herself. It's more like boxing has saved her life. And she wants to make it proud of her. Working with the champ. Yes, sir. All right, you ready for this? Are Why? you gonna try and make me cry like Mark Kriegel? He loves that. <laughs> Let's do this. So take me back to the beginning. How'd you end up falling in love with a sport like boxing? Really for me, boxing just fell into my hands. Like I, nobody in my family ever boxed before. Even though I went through that rebellious stage as a teenager, like I've just been, I've always been an extremist. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it 100%. I'm not gonna half-ass it. So I think that boxing just found me at the perfect time because I was ready to dive into something. I was ready to pour all my energy into something and be great at it. So take me back to the rebellious stage you mentioned. You sound like you had a lot of energy, even maybe some anger, and you were just looking for answers. Well, first you have to understand that when I was going through this stage of rebellion, I got kicked out of my high school for fighting, then I got sent to another high school, fell behind there, then I ended up at a continuation school where the kids who screw up go. Not only was I getting kicked out of schools, but I wouldn't come home for weeks at a time. My dad was worried, you know? I, mean, I just remember him like, literally in tears to me one day, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what, what do you need from me? That was one of the moments where I was like, I just, what am I doing in my life? Like, I really need to just snap out of this and get back to that, that person that my, that my dad saw me as. When I decided that I wanted to change my life around and be good at something, all I needed was an outlet, something that triggered me to pour my energy into, something that I like loved, something that I fell in love with. And that was just boxing. <laughs> A couple months in, I just totally turned my life around, cracked down in school, cut off a lot of friends, and said I wanted to be the best female fighter in the world. I ended up graduating a little bit early from high school and just poured everything into training. Act like you get me. Good, good. How does a 17-year-old girl from Southern California find a 70-year-old coach like Al Mitchell? If most teenagers were to go home and tell their parents after two weeks of training, I want to go to the Olympics, Dad. I know I just started this sport, but I want to train for the Olympics. It's in two years. They would call you crazy. 
my dad saw me like going to the gym every day and like really passionate about something, you know, he really supported me in it. And so he got on the computer, started looking around, and there was an article on the USA Boxing website talking about this program up here with a two-time Olympic coach at the time named Al Mitchell, and it was in, it was in Michigan. I'm like, whatever, I'm like, two-time Olympic coach sounds great to me. About a week later, it goes, I got a hold of them, they want you there in two weeks. And I'm like, what, what? So he's like, yeah, you, they want you there in two weeks because school starts. I got there the day school started. And the next morning, I was up at 5 a.m. meeting with Coach Al for the first time. When she come to me, she came in the wintertime, a little summer outfit on, because she come from California. Snow like I don't know what. Day I drove her around, show how things was and everything. Do the job now. Coach Al's known for raising multiple national champions, world medalists, Olympians. So you had Mayweather, Antonio Tarver, Andre Ward, and David Reed, and he had Vernon Forrest as his world champion. He had tons of guys. She should be 130 here. So I knew that he was the coach that was gonna get me to where I wanted to go. Right on the money. Remember, no one punch unless it's a jab. You throw a right hand, hook goes with it. All right, I protect you, okay? You're doing good. She first come in the gym. She looked at me, she said, Coach, who I'm a spa? I don't see no girls in here. I said, you go spa the boys. Good shot, good shot. And I said, if you stay in here, if you box them and hold your own, you'll stay here. If not, you'll quit. You can your back leg a lot better today and everything. But you stand over here all the time. You, you go on ship here, OK? So I remember what some of the boxes say, including me. I say, she ain't going to last two or three months. Move your head side to side, Mikhail. Not straight in the middle. You got to get hit. He will openly say, like, my dad would roll over in the, his grave if he knew I was training a female. I did say that I never trained a female because my father would turn over his grave. That's just the words I say. Tom, good job. That's the way I was grew up. Girls, you don't hit them, you know? I never hit a girl in my life. Lost a nail. I lose mine all the time. She lost a nail. Yeah. <laughs> so Coach Al flat out says he's not going to train a female fighter. Well, how did you get him to train you? Yeah, I mean, I took myself seriously. I was like all in it, but it just definitely took me a while to like get him to see that. And on her way to the ring for her first pro fight. You know, he didn't want a female in the program. He never had a female in the program. And my dad's point was, well, you know, they're allowing three Olympic weights for women this coming 2012 Olympics. So you have to take my daughter <laughs> is what he is what he says. You have to take her. You, you'll just see her box. She's good. And so he took me sort of, I think, just, OK, we need to fill the spots. I want to keep this program going. Sure, bring her on in. Michaela Mayer. It's 5 o'clock in the morning when I take everybody to run. She was running with them. She had a job bartending about 20 miles from here. Michaela Mayer tries to strike early on. And she was going to school and working 5 in the morning, then come back in at 3 and train. Left and then a right. Michaela Mayer in control. She had to only be getting two, three, or four hours sleep a day. Easy. In her pro debut, sends Figaro to the ground. Michaela Mayer. And I seen what she was doing. I said, well, let me try to push her and everything. Good left hand jab there by Michaela. And I think she's definitely hurt now. Yeah. Stabbing and she's down. They already stunned her. Already. Back against the ropes, one hand. She's not defending herself. Finding the passion gives you purpose. And so every day I was able to wake up and say, okay, I know what my purpose is. Still undefeated. Michaela. I knew that I wanted to be the best male fighter in the world. It's a knockdown. She turned oh. right into that. Punch. One thing I learned, I ain't gonna never say never no more because I put my foot in my mouth when I said that. It's her first belt being put in Four years later, we were on our way to the Olympic trials. You missed out on the 2012 Olympic Games in London. Tell me, what was it like to have accomplished so much, but just fall short from making the Olympic squad? 
I was excited about that next stage in my life because I've been wanting to make the Olympic team and you know, being young and living at the Olympic Training Center with other athletes and the whole Team USA was just like a cool experience. But also I knew that like Coach Al was the one to get me there. And so I think what really made him believe in me, even after so many years together, was the 2012 Olympic Trials Tournament. This is when she showed me her character. She lost her second fight. It's double elimination in the Olympic Trials. And you're going to lose a bracket. So it's number loser you fighting all the way to get back to the championship round. And she went, made it all the way back in Fort Queen to, to pass Olympic again and lost by two or three points. And I told her then, I said, I never had a boy boxer or a man boxer do something like that get, and get in a loser bracket and come all the way back. That's never been done before. She the first one did it. And I told her she was crying and I said, hey, don't feel bad. I said, you did a good job. It was sad. I was obviously not happy about the decision, but I knew right away that I still very much had a dream that was very much alive and that I was going to make 2016 my goal and that I was going to make the Olympic team for 2016. I put in the golden gloves and she fight queen and beat her. Got outstanding boxing. Then she just was winning, 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 winning. We go into the 2016 Olympic trials as the number one seed. You know, we held our number one spot for those four years, which isn't easy to do. And I qualified for Rio. I went to compete in Rio. And long story short, after the games, I just didn't feel like how I thought I was going to feel. It wasn't just about not meddling. I didn't get the endorsements I thought I was going to get. I didn't get the media attention I thought I was going to get. It was really like, wow, all this work, and what do I have to show for it? I wanted more. Like, I wanted the world to see what I was capable of. And I knew right then and there that it was just time to move on from amateur boxing. Work on what we talking about here, here. Thank you. Here. Yeah, just a little. Huh? You don't have to bring it up. It's just. Is <laughs> that bringing it too high? <laughs> okay. Even if man, you were here, if I go, you gonna react. Yeah. So, give me five of those. Good technique. So you represented your country in the 2016 Summer Olympics, and naturally, you wanted to turn pro. You became the first female boxer to be signed by top rank. How much pressure did you have to deliver? I feel like I've had pressure from the jump, you know? I mean, being signed to top rank, the only female, um, I, there was a weight on my shoulders there because I felt like I was fighting for us women. You know, you think that top rank signed a female, oh, Michaela's set, she's good, but no. Like, I think for the first two years, I was proving myself to top rank every fight. Michaela Mayer in control in her pro debut. And they could have cut me. If I'd had any loss that first year, they could have cut me. And so I had a lot of pressure. I had a big job to do. Because if I failed, then, you know, they weren't going to believe in women's boxing. She's a presence in the ring. She owns the ring. She gets a knockdown real early. And I feel like I've done that. And I'm glad I've done that. You know, I, want, I wanted to prove that to them. The women now is trying to be better than the men. And believe it or not, most of the bouts I see nowadays, the women is better than the men. And to get that way, they got to charge up there and do all they can and everything. Good combination there by Bayer. Michaela showed that she could box. And then when you look at the smaller waist, oh, it's gangsters. It's like walking in a landmine. This fight has been all Michaela Bayer. But I'm seeing the girls do like the men used to do in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. They stepping up and they fighting anybody, you know? They not ducking nobody. So I love how you let your boxing speak for itself, but you've also been very vocal about wanting to fight the best, and you got the title fight you were asking for against Brodnika. Yeah, so we get the fight with Brodnika. We're happy, it's what we wanted, and I'm a little heated, right? I'm like, I'm, I'm going to this fight, like this girl is done, like she's been champ for way too long. This is Brodnika, her last fight, that she won the title. And I was talking to her, and I explained to her when I watched this girl box, she was undefeated, and how she beat most of her athletes that she boxed. She beat them with movement. She'll move, come back, catch them. She going to grab you. 
She gonna, she's slick, moving around to the right and left. She get off two or three punches and tie you up. In other words, she score points, tie you up, so you can't do nothing, you know? Smart boxing, you know? And so it was a frustrating fight for me. It was annoying, and I see how she went 19 and 0. I don't think she's a good style fighter, but it got her to 19 and 0. So it does work, and luckily Coach Al and I had had worked on that game plan. So even though it was a little tricky and annoying, and we were able to to win clearly. Good combination for Bear. He has been all the kill of Bear. Having that world title fight and winning it was really important to me, yes, but it was just a step in the right direction. Like, I still have so much I want to accomplish, so many girls I want to fight in this division. I want to go undisputed. And new! And so that was just what I needed, you know, to get me there, to get me in position for the next step. Michaela Mayer! Let's talk about you being a female in a predominantly male-driven sport. You guys take the same risk that we take. You guys make the same sacrifices. You know, there's a huge gap in the pay scale. There's a huge gap in the opportunities that you guys get. Do you feel like you get the respect that you that you deserve and that the other ladies get the respect that they deserve? There is definitely still a lot of work to be done when it comes to equality in boxing with between men and women, a lot. But you have to look back in history, like think about it, women were just allowed to compete into, in the Olympics in 2012. Boxing was one of the first Olympic sports ever. So men have had this, these, these years and years and years to develop, right? And, and to compete at the highest level. We weren't even allowed to compete at the world championships and the amateurs until, I don't know, early 2000s or something like that. So now you see women who are able to come into the pros and say, I'm a multiple time national champion. I'm a world medalist. I'm an Olympian, Olympic gold medalist. And we didn't have that before. So now there's no denying us. Talent pool is too deep. We're coming. And eventually, they're, they're going to have to give us the respect. Woo! Working with the champ. Yes, sir. So do you have a problem with females only fighting two minute rounds instead of three? All the modifications that the ladies deal with that the men don't have to deal with, are you a fan of that? Or you feel like, give us even Steven? I want to do what the guys do. Here's my thing. Why are we in a rush to do what the men do if we're not receiving the same treatment? And it's not going to go hand in hand. If they give us 12 three minute rounds, they're not gonna automatically up our pay. They're not gonna automatically start signing more point. women and putting us on, on networks. I'm not gonna do more until they do more. What am I? <laughs> right. Until they start treating women like that and like they do the men, then why are we gonna fight for what the men do? That's interesting. I, I like that. I haven't heard that take from a, from a lady yeah. fighter yet. It's normally like, no, give us equality, but it's like, I like that. It's like, this is prize fighting. Like, if you're gonna up my prize and give me more for my sacrifice, because that's more yeah. punches you're taking. I admire that about you because you know, you got, you, you're in the, the thick of your career right now. You just won a title, but you keep shouting out women in general, not just you. Like, why do you care so much about the other ladies coming behind you? Well, because I know what that's like. I knew how hard it was for me to get to where I am because there was no path. If you look back at the last generation of women, you know, Mia St. John and Lucia Riker, Christy Martin, Layla. what happened just sort of fell off. I had to like create this path as I went on and I had to learn and I had to adjust and there really was no blueprint. And like, I don't want that to happen again. That, yeah. that it shouldn't happen again. The talent pool is too deep. There's too many young women coming up. I want people to see women's boxing, right? So I've always said like, every time I step into the ring, because I have this platform, I have a duty to prove that we belong on this stage. Like I'm representing a lot of women every time I walk into that ring. And so I think that a lot of girls coming up who see me and want to be in my position or want to be an Olympian or want to fight professionally, yeah, I am a role model to them now because I've done it and I've helped to pave a way for them. But there's, there's still bumps in the road when it comes to pursuing a career in the pros. And by the time I'm done, I want that to be a, a smooth road. So when it's all said and done, and you fight your final fight, what do you envision yourself doing after boxing? So I'm like always thinking ahead, and I know that I'm not going to box forever, and I do want to stay in the sport that I love, and so I always thought, saw myself eventually doing some boxing commentating.
And will you look at who the guest analyst is today, Michaela Mayer, the WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World. We're used to being on the other side with you here, calling your championship fights. Welcome. I know. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on the other side of the ropes. See, this is what I want to have financial freedom to enjoy my life. I want to be in a career that I love. I don't want to wake up every day and ever have to go to a job that I hate. And right now I'm doing something that I love, so it doesn't feel like a job. I mean, I love boxing. I love my career. And it's just my first step in that direction. I mean, I still obviously have a huge boxing career ahead of me. I still have plenty of fight in me for a few more years, but eventually I want to go into the commentating world. And so, yeah, this is great to be on the other side of the ropes. See I'm doing a lot of movement. I'm not yeah. giving you uh, a rest. I'm not throwing punches. Right. I see stuff, but I'm always I'm I'm just unnerving you. You can't. You gotta keep working on that. Yeah. Let's go. Where do you see yourself in your career right now? And what can the fans expect from Michaela Mayer in the future? This is sort of the time in my career where my legacy is going to come into play. I'm all out of position, you right there, bang, bang, that was beautiful. We put in a lot of time. We've really started from scratch. Peace, Good, peace, that's the way to punch peace, it. Peace. A huge amateur career, 14 pro fights. Mayor, the undefeated rising star in women's boxing. Coach asked me the other day, he's like, did you ever imagine yourself in this position? And I'm like, well, yeah, coach, I did. I had to believe that we were going to be in this position because this is everything we've been working for. Digging it. We're in position now as a world champion to fight the other world champions and become undisputed. And whoever becomes undisputed at 130 is going to leave a huge legacy behind because this is a very stacked division for women. There's tons of talent here. And I'm not going to let all the hard work that my team has put in, that I put in, and let this slip through my hands. You know, I'm going to hold on to this belt and be able to be known as one of the best female fighters that ever did it. Well, man, I, I see it coming little by little. It's from, you know, individuals like yourself, many others, Katie Taylor, you know, Claressa mm -hmm. Shields. You guys are paving the way, and I support you guys. There's a lot of other male fighters that support you guys, so we're going to keep doing our thing, but we need you guys to keep doing your thing and not just fight, but keep being a voice for the ladies, man. So so much respect, and um, yeah, you're yeah. going to have a fan for life for me. Appreciate you. Thanks.